Oh, hi, Rich. Hi, Rich. How are you? Yeah, not bad, thanks. So what's in store for us today? We've got another video for stroke survivors that's a bit more challenging called Active Exercise. Hi everyone and welcome to Exercise for Health. My name's Richard and today we're going to be doing a 20 minute video that mimics an exercise after stroke community based program uh, but they've been, the exercises have been adapted to be able to do in your own home. If you're not confident enough to actually independently move around your house to do some of the exercises then I would suggest doing our level 2 active standing video. If you click on the pop out banner that comes in above my head now that will take you straight to that particular video. So to follow the exercises in the video today, you are gonna need a few things. First thing is you're gonna need a chair to be able to do some of the exercises from. I'm in an armchair at the moment, but ideally it'd be better if you've got a dining room chair that's a little bit higher. You are gonna need a space to be able to do some of the exercises in, but near something that you can hold on to for some sort of support. You're gonna need a wall space because we're gonna be doing an exercise up against the actual wall itself. And you're also gonna need a step uh, a really low step would be ideal. I mean, you can use a bottom step on a flight of stairs, um, or it could adapt it. It could be just a line on the floor or a mat or something like that in front of you. And finally, for one of the last exercises we're gonna do, you're gonna need a cushion, because we're gonna get the arms moving with the cushion. So with that in mind, most importantly, safety first, okay? It's really important that you don't do anything today that's gonna compromise your balance and also don't do anything that you feel that you're not able to do following your stroke. So only do what you're comfortable with. So with that in mind, we'll then get started. Right, so the first thing we need to do then is get you to a standing position. If you're already in a standing position, then there's no need to go seated to do this. Uh, it's not one of the exercises, just be able to get up to a position where you can make a transition. So from there, I want you to walk the hips forwards. So you can use your hands if you want to, to start to walk the hips forwards so you can get to the front half of your chair. Make sure your feet are about a shoulder width wide on the floor. Um, if you've got a stick or a frame that you'd normally use to assist you to get to a standing position, then obviously use that. Um, but the movement then is I'm gonna lean the body forwards so I can feel my weight being pushed through the feet into the floor. And at that point, I'm gonna try and see if I can lift the bottom up off the chair. And then once I've got that elevation, I'm gonna drive my hips up and forwards to get to a standing position. Just make sure you've got your balance, make sure you just check your posture as well when you're in that standing position. Okay, and then once you've done that, now what we need to do is you're gonna need to make a transition to get to your space where you're gonna start doing the warm-up exercises near some sort of support. Okay, so now you've made your transition to the space where you're gonna be doing the warm-up exercises, just make sure that you have got something really close to you that you can hold on to for a support. So the first thing I want you to do is stand up tall and we're going to get you marching on the spot. So we're just going to make that transition from left foot to right foot, doing a slow walk while you hold on to your support if you need it. If you're confident enough to do it without the support or if you just want to use your own stick or anything like that, that's absolutely fine. But just think about your posture while you're walking. So shoulders down and back, stand up straight. And if you can get the arms moving a bit as well, even better. If you need a support with one of your arms, so if one of your arms has been affected by the stroke and you want to hold on to that to get some arm movement in it while you're doing the walking with the feet, then great, do that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go in to do a side step. So from here, I just want you to take one step slightly to the right and then move back one step slightly to the left. So in your own time, just moving from side to side within your space. Again, if you need the support to hold on to while we're going from side to side, do that. As we're doing that, try not to bring the feet too close together. So we want to try and make sure that we've got a constant base of support. If your feet are too close, that's going to obviously compromise your balance a little bit. So always keep the feet from a shoulder width wide, shoulder width and a half, and then a shoulder width wide again as I move from side to side. Good. And then if you come back to your space in the middle, and then we'll go back to a walk again. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna get the shoulders to move a little bit. So you can either do this facing forwards. If you wanna face your support to do this, then you can do that if you want to. So you can bring your feet down to a standstill, feet about shoulder width wide, and then from there I'm gonna lift the shoulders up towards my ears, 
squeeze the shoulder blades back together and then let the shoulders drop back down. So again, if you wanna use your support while you're doing this, fine. If your stroke's affected you on one side that doesn't move as much, really try and focus on that side to get some movement in it. Nice big deep breaths as the shoulders are going up and round. Do one more. Great, and then we'll go back into a walk again, back on the spot. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna start to get the spine to move a little bit. So for this one, we need to have your feet a little bit wider because we are gonna be moving the top half of the body. So bring your feet down to a standstill. Take the feet out a little bit wider this time. Again, hold on to your support if you need it, but we're gonna be moving from side to side. So the top half of the body is gonna lean one way, just as far as you feel comfortable. Come back up to the center and then lean the body the other way. You just go as far as you feel comfortable, so don't try and force it down too far. And if, with your feet being that little bit wider, you should feel a little bit more comfortable. You shouldn't compromise your balance. Do one more of those. Then come back up to the middle. Good, bring the feet back in. And then we'll go back into a little walk again. Okay, next one we're gonna do is similar, but we're gonna actually get the spine to twist. So foot position is gonna be the same as the last one. So bring your feet out nice and wide, about one and a half shoulder widths wide. Again, hold on to your support if you need to, but this time we're gonna keep the hips facing forwards, but just twist the top half of the spine as far as you feel comfortable one way, and then come back through the center and twist the top half of the body to turn and face the other way. So it's just the shoulders that are twisting, your head goes with it as you move from left to right, but the hips are trying to stay as still as you can. Good, we'll do one more on this side. Then come back to the middle, bring the feet back in, then we'll go back to a walk again. Right, we've got one more little mobility exercise to do as part of this warm up, and that's to work the ankle. So we're gonna do a heel and toe action. So for this one, again, near your support, I'd suggest for this one, because most of the weight's gonna be on one foot. With the other foot, we're gonna go heel on the floor, so I'm trying to lift the toes back as much as I can towards me. And then where that heel is on that floor, on that spot, I'm then gonna place my toes on that point. And I'm gonna do it again. So I'm gonna go heel, toe. Now if this is your stroke affected side, you might find it quite difficult to get some movement in the ankle, potentially especially if you've got um, uh, ankle foot orthosis or a splint, or if you use an FES box, a frequency electrical stimulation box, then you might find the movement limited. So if you do find the movement limited, to do this exercise, what you can do is you can step forward, so trying to push the toes down, and then step back a bit, trying to push the heel down. So that'll get a little bit of movement in the ankle by pushing the heel down as you go back, and then pushing the toes down as you go forwards. But if you can do the movement, on the spot and get more movement in the ankle, then great. Right, let's switch over. So I'm gonna now place my weight onto that foot and do the opposite side. Again, make sure you've got the support still for you to hold on to while you're doing the exercise. So again, we're going from heel to toes. See how much movement you can get around that ankle. Brilliant. Okay, let's bring that foot back in and then we'll just go back into a walk for the last time. So that finishes the warm up. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna transition into the first exercise, which is gonna be some step ups. Now this is where you can either use a step, if you've got a step on a flight of stairs and you're happy, you can actually confidently step up as high as that, great. If not, you can just use a low step if you've got a low step nearby or a mat even on the floor, something that you could visually use to actually step up and down from. Okay, so let's make a transition to that position. Right, so our first exercise we're gonna do in the main part of the program then is step ups. So now you should be close to your step. In this case, I'm gonna be using a doormat on the floor as my step, because it's got a little bit of a lip to it. Um, it can be any height of step that you're confident that you're able to manage. So if you are using a, a step on the bottom of a flight of stairs, please make sure that you have got something nearby that you can actually hold on to. That's really crucial for this one because there is a chance that you can lose your balance on this one more than any of the other exercises that we do in this particular program. So I'm gonna still use my support here. I'm gonna use the mat on the floor to do my step ups on. 
and what we're going to do is make sure that we stay stand up nice and straight as we step up onto the step leading with any leg and I'll talk a bit about that in a minute make sure that you've got your foot planted securely on the step before you then put your weight on it to bring the other foot up and over once you're then in a standing position up on the step and you've got your balance, you then need to then go back to the start position. So this is the crucial bit, making sure that the leg that you take back clears the step for you to be able to then lower yourself back down to the floor. Okay, a lot of occasions I've seen people when they're trying to come down and their foot gets caught on the edge of the step as they're trying to come back down. So make sure that your leg completely clears that step to be able to get your foot down onto the floor. Once your weight's on that one, then the other foot can then come back off again. Now in terms of progressions, you can do this in different ways. If, you're, if you've got quite low level and you feel that you need the support of the, the stronger leg, then the best way to do it is to lead with the strong leg up onto the step. Once you're up on the step, then you lead with the weaker leg to come back down. So that means the stronger leg is then doing most of the work to go up and down. An intermediate level would be to lead with the strong leg to go up onto the step, and then you lead with the strong leg again to go back down. So this way then, the weaker side is getting some work as you're lowering back down. And the hardest version is to lead with the weaker leg to go up onto the step, and then lead with the stronger leg to then come back down again. So that way, the weaker leg is then doing most of the work going up and down. Now we're gonna do this for a minute. So if you get yourself ready in your space, I'll time it for you. Make sure you've got good balance and good posture as you go through. Ready, off you go. So lead in with your chosen leg to go up onto the step. Make sure you've got your balance when you're at the top and then very carefully make sure that foot clears it as you come back down again. Now it doesn't matter how quickly you do these. The most important thing is to make sure that you're getting the transition between distributing your weight between each foot. So make sure you do it carefully, that's what's most important, and it doesn't compromise your balance at any point. So really control it as you come back down. That's the hardest bit, is when you're lowering yourself back down and trying to get your leg and your foot particularly to clear the step as you're lowering back down here, back to your start position. Good, We've got a few more seconds to do on this one. Okay, you'll probably get a chance to do one more. Okay, so if you slowly now gather yourself back down onto the floor. Good, make sure you've got your balance. Excellent, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make a transition to go to the next exercise, which is a knee to hand. And again, this is where you're gonna need a little bit of wall space, because you can actually stand near the wall for this one. And again, if you've got something for you to hold onto for support, that will be ideal. Okay, so you should have now made a transition to your next part where you've got a wall behind you and something secure for you to hold on to. So we're gonna do a knee to hand, which is basically bring the knee up to tap the hand. If you're confident enough that you don't need to hold on to support, then you can have your knees out in front and bring the knee up to tap the hand this way. Or why we suggest is actually holding on to something and then just bring the knee up to tap the hand on one side. Now if your strokes affected you on one side, Let's say this was my stroke effector side and the weaker one because my stronger side is always going to be holding on to the support. You may find that the knee doesn't want to lift very high and also it's quite difficult to actually get the knee to bend. So try and make sure you just get as much of a lift as you can but try not to lean the body over too much. Try and keep the body upright. Just get as much movement in the hip and in the knee as you can to lift the knee up. Don't, even if that means putting the hand down lower as a guide, that's fine. And then obviously the other one you might find a little bit easier coming up. We're going to do this for one minute again. So get yourself ready, make sure you've got a wall behind you if you can. Ready, off you go. So lifting that knee, tap the hand, once it's back down, then try on the opposite side. Try not to lean, you will lean naturally a little bit from left to right as you make the transition, moving your weight from one foot to the other one. And again, it doesn't matter how many of these we do in the minute, that's irrelevant. We're just trying to create some movement into the knees and the hips to strengthen up those muscles. As you do this though, try and make sure you stay upright. So stay straight, so your posture's good. So if you're happy to do this without holding on to anything, great if you're able to do that, but don't do anything that's gonna compromise your balance. 
good. Okay, last few seconds on this one. Brilliant, okay, well done. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a transition to a bit of wall space where we can do a wall press up. So for here, I'm gonna do it on the wall behind me. Okay, so now you've made your transition to your wall space, we're gonna be doing a wall press up. So for this one, you're gonna be turning to face the wall, your feet are gonna be a shoulder width wide, and your body is gonna be about arm's length away from the actual wall itself. So the movement from there is I want my hands to be on the wall about a shoulder width wide and slightly lower than shoulder height, flat on the wall, and then I'm gonna allow the body to go in towards the wall, keeping it straight. So from shoulders through hips, down through the legs, it's all gonna stay in a straight line. So I'm not bending at the hips, and I'm not sticking the bottom out behind as they go in and out. So I'm bending at the elbows and the shoulders as I go in, and then push my hands into the wall to push myself back out to arm's length. So that's the exercise. Now if your strokes affected you on one side where you struggle with the one arm that might be slightly weaker, what you can do, so if this is my stroke affected side, I can place that on the actual wall and use my stronger hand to just press on top to make sure it stays there. And then I can still simulate a similar movement with a wall press, okay? If your arm is sufficiently affected, it's got quite high tone, so it's up like this, then you can use your stronger arm to grab hold of that wrist and simulate a wall press up movement by just pushing that arm out to try and get a stretch in it. So this stronger arm's getting some work like doing a wall press up because you're trying to see if you can stretch out this arm slightly and then allow the arm then to come back in. So that's the alternative if, if the strokes affect you on that side that makes it quite difficult to move it at all, okay? Well, I'm gonna show you this way. We're gonna do one minute. So get yourself ready, hands on the wall, and off you go. So make sure that body stays in a straight line. So you're keeping it up nice and tall as you go in and out. And you'll feel that working on the muscles on the back of the arms and into the shoulders. Same as what we've done before. We're doing this for a minute, but it doesn't matter how many you do in the minute. And it's better to get slow and controlled movements rather than trying to do them too quickly. So that way you can really feel, get that mind-body connection, feel the muscles being worked. Particularly if you've got a weaker side, you wanna make sure that you're not dominantly putting all your weight onto your stronger side. So make sure that you've got 50-50 weight distribution between your hands and you're not relying on your stronger side to do all the work. Good, we've got a few more seconds left on this one. You should be feeling that now into the arms and the shoulders. Good, and when you finish, stop there, bring the hands back down. Okay, so now we're gonna make a transition to go for your walk. So this is just where you're gonna have to find a bit of space in your house. You might need your stick or frame if you feel that you wanna use that to be able to do your walk in, but we're just gonna do a repetitive walk up and down for a minute. Okay, so now you've made your transition to your space for you to be able to walk up and down in. Um, I'm using this little bit of space in my living room to go up and down in. And ideally, it'd be great if at one end you have got something for you to hold on to and near a wall space perhaps, or even near a chair. So if you felt you needed to stop, you've got something to hold on to. Like I said a second ago, if you've got a stick or a frame for you to hold on to, please use that if you find that's more comfortable. Also, if you've got an FES box, um, it might be worth actually having this on for this exercise just to help you walk up and down to make sure that the toes are being lifted so you can get that heel stroke as you're walking. The hardest bit will be when you get to one end of your space is making the turn. So when you've got as far as you can, just be careful when you're making the turn, whichever way it is you choose to go, whichever's more comfortable, make sure that you do that carefully. So you're making the transition between putting the weight onto your left foot and then your right foot as you turn. Make sure you've got your balance before you then start to make your way to walk back to where you started. Okay, so that's gonna be the exercise. Again, we're gonna do this for one minute. So get yourself ready, off you go. So if you can, as you're walking, try and get that heel down before the toes go down as you're walking. And then as soon as you've got to the end of your space, be careful when you're making that turn. 
I say make sure the foot's turning out or the foot's turning in to make the transition. Get your balance before you then start walking back to where you started. Okay, it might be um, sometimes when people have had a stroke that they find that they swing the leg round slightly. So try and make sure if you can, you're not getting the, the leg to kind of hitch up, if you're getting this hip hitch or it swings around. Try and see if you can get it to go straight forwards if you can. Try and focus on the technique. Okay. The other thing you can do is also make sure that as you're walking, that it's trying to get it as even as we can. So we're not taking a big step with our stronger leg and then just dragging the other foot forwards. So make sure that you're getting an even space step between each step. So however far one leg goes forwards, the other one should do the same. Right, we've done our minute. So keep walking though to get to a point where you can hold on to something if you need to. Okay, now I've ideally got back to my chair because the next exercise now is you need to go back to a chair because we're gonna do a sit to stand exercise. So that'll be the next one. Right then, so you've made your way back to your chair now. So what we need to do is we're gonna do a sit to stand exercise. And this will be the last one because everything after this is gonna be done seated. So. You're gonna make sure that you've moved yourself back so you can feel the chair just touching the back of the legs. So make sure you've got that first. If you've got your framework stick that you're using, then obviously hold on to that as we're going up and down. But the emphasis on this is to try and get a nice steady movement as we go up and down. It can be done at a quicker pace if you're comfortable going faster, which will give you more of a cardiovascular effect. So in other words, it will get you a little bit more breathless. Or if you feel that you want to do it a lot slower, then it's going to really work into the muscles a lot more, so it'll act as more of a strength and conditioning exercise. So you can do this one in either way that whatever suits you. So make sure you've got your feet at shoulder width wide then. Make sure you can feel for the back of the chair first. And then from there, we're going to slowly lower down. So I'm starting to bend at the hip. I'm sticking my bottom backwards. My body's coming forward slowly to lower back down until I'm practically back into the chair in a seated position. And then I'm gonna lean the body forwards again, do it in reverse, lift the bottom up, power my hips forwards to get back up to standing. So that's the movement. We're gonna do this for one minute, like we've done with the other ones. So get yourself ready, and off you go. So nice and steady as you go down. Make sure you've got that in a controlled manner. As soon as you're seated, then you wanna be thinking about starting to move forwards and then come back up. Obviously, if you find this tough, because it will, you will feel it in the legs a little bit, if, if you've done sort of two or three and you're tired and you just want to stay sat down for a bit, then you can stay sat down for a bit before you then get going again. But ideally over time, you might get to a point where you can do this consistently moving for the full minute. Good, so hopefully none of this will compromise your balance and you'll feel that in the legs and around the hips. So notice I'm doing this quite slowly, so this will act as more of a strength exercise. I've got some people in my exercise after stroke class that do these quite quickly, which gives them a more of a cardio respiratory effect, so they really feel their breathing going up. Right, last few seconds. And then once you're finished, if you slowly sit yourself back down into your chair. Okay, good, right then. So the last one exercise we're gonna do in the chair before we do some stretches is we're gonna be using a cushion. So this is why we wanna get yourself a cushion and we're gonna do an arm raise with the cushion. So that's the next one. Right then, so now you've sat back in your chair, you can actually move yourself back towards the back of the chair to get a bit more comfortable for this one if you wish. But still make sure that you're sat upright. So I don't want you to be sat completely back into the chair. You still need to get your back away from the back of the chair to keep in that right position so we can work your postural muscles while we're doing this last exercise. So the exercise is gonna be, um, uh, we normally do this in the class as a, as a ball lift and lower, we hold like a weight. Um, in this case, we're gonna be using a cushion. So if you've got use of both arms in a normal sense that they haven't been affected by the stroke too severely, then you're gonna hold on to two corners of the cushion, so the rest of the cushion slightly underneath. And while you're sat up tall, the arms are gonna stay straight and you're gonna lift the cushion up until your fists are about shoulder height and then lower back down until the cushion's pretty much touching your shins and your arms are back down to where your knees are. So that's gonna be the movement, okay? If you've obviously got a weight, if you feel that's too easy with a cushion, you wanna hold on to something heavier, then obviously use something different if you wish. But if your stroke's affected you on one side, 
and you find that you can't use it to be able to grip the cushion or grip something that you're gonna use to lift and lower like a weight, then there's an alternative way of doing it. So if this was my stroke effector side, my right hand, I'm gonna place the right hand on top of the cushion and just rest it on there. And then my stronger arm is gonna go underneath the cushion to be able to then lift the cushion up. So this will be the alternative. So I'm sat up tall and I'm gonna lift the cushion up with my weaker hand up on the top. So it's getting some movement into the weaker side as I lift and lower the cushion with the other arm. Okay, so that's an alternative if you find that the stroke's affected you on one side. We're gonna be doing it for one minute again, just like we've done with the previous ones. So if you wanna get yourself ready, and off you go. So lift up only to shoulder height and then lower back down. If you're doing it the way I'm doing it at the moment and the stroke's affected you on one side, be careful when you lift up not to try and go too far that you might get some pain then into that shoulder. So work within your range of movement that's pain free so you're getting some movement into that arm without putting any undue stress on the shoulder joint. Good, so you'll feel this working into the shoulders as we go up and down. So still make sure you're maintaining good posture. It's quite easy to start to lose those postural muscles, start to slouch when we're doing this. So still make sure you're sat up tall while you're lifting the arms up and down. That's good. Right, a few more seconds left on this one. Good, and once you finish off that last one, lower it back down, bring the hands in. Excellent, right, that's the last one finished. So what we're gonna do to cool down now and finish off is we're gonna run through a few stretches and we're gonna do those staying seated in our chair. Okay, well done, you finished the main part then. Let's go into the stretches. Now for this one, if you have, like I was, sat back further into the chair, it's probably worth you moving your hips a little bit closer to the front half of the chair to do some of these stretches with. So walk your hips forwards, like we did at the beginning when we were getting ready to stand up. So you're on the front half of your chair. Feet shoulder width wide on the floor. Sit yourself up tall. And the first one we're gonna do is a stretch for the muscles up on the top of the back. So I want you to put one hand on top of the other, or if you've got a weaker side, just grab hold of that wrist, lift your arms up to about chest height, and then I want you to then just gently push your arms forwards. So as the arms straighten out, the shoulders are moving forwards as well. So you're feeling like the shoulder blades are being pulled apart. And then just hold that position for a few seconds while we're stretching those muscles up on the top of the back. Slow, gentle breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth, nice and relaxed, just to stretch out those muscles that you've worked today. Good, and release. Okay, we're going to our next one where we're gonna take the hands behind us to stretch the muscles across the chest. So if you can, place in the back of the hands into the lower part of your back. And while you're sat up tall, you're gonna squeeze the shoulder blades together, pulling the elbows backwards. If your strokes affected your mobility or your arms that you can't actually get your arms back behind you, don't worry too much, just relax the arms down and focus on squeezing the shoulder blades back together like this and you should get the same sort of benefit to stretch out the muscles across the front. So I'll let you choose which version you wanna do. But again, just try and hold that position where you feel the muscles being stretched. Slow, gentle breathing in through the nose and then out through the mouth. Good, okay. Right, the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch the muscle around the side of the shoulder. So for this one, we're gonna take one hand up underneath the other arm, and we're gonna lift and pull that arm across the body slightly. So this arm that I'm stretching is staying straight, so you can feel a little bit of a stretch around the shoulder. Again, if your stroke's affected on one side, if this was my stroke affected side, I could just try and use this one arm to pull across. But this, if this was my stroke affected one, then obviously you're gonna use your strong arm to pull it round. Good, and then we'll swap over. So taking an arm across the body, and use the other hand just to assist if you can to bring it further around. If, you, if that's your stroke effective one, you can't use it, just pull this arm around as far as you can. Good, okay, the next one is gonna be stretching the muscle on the back of the arm. So for this one, ideally, if you start off with your stronger side, we're gonna lift the hand up towards the shoulder and then start to lift the elbow up and back 
as far as you can, like you're trying to get your hand to go down your spine and your first stretch here on the back of the arm. Again, make sure you're still sat up tall, hold that position for a few seconds, slow gentle breathing again like we've done previously. Good, and then relax. Let's do the same on the other side. And this, if this is your weaker side, if you need to, you can grab hold of the wrist and just pull that wrist up towards the shoulder on the same side and then start to try and lift the elbow up a little bit until you can feel the stretch. Obviously, if you haven't had a stroke affected on that side, then just lift the elbow up, but if you can, do it this way. Good, and relax. Right, the last one we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch out the muscles in the back of the legs. So for this one, if you straighten out one leg in front of you, again, we'll start with the stronger side first. So we want the knee straight with the heel on the ground, and I want you to really focus on pulling the toes and the foot back towards you in that position. Place the hands on the opposite leg and sit yourself up straight. And that might actually already engage a stretch down the back of the leg. If it doesn't, keep that posture, but start to bend forwards from the hip. And as you go forwards, keeping the upper body upright, that will increase the stretch down the back of the legs. Really focus on pulling those toes back towards you so we can stretch those calf muscles down the back of the legs that do get tight. So slow, gentle breathing again, like we've done previously. Good, okay, bring that foot back in. So let's now work onto the weaker side. So if you need to assist it to get the leg to go out straight, see if you can get that leg out as straight as you possibly can at the knee first. That foot might drop, so I want you to focus on really trying to think about pulling the foot and the toes back towards you while you're doing this one. Making sure that knee stays straight, hands on the opposite leg, and sit up straight. And again, if you don't feel a stretch yet, start to go forwards. Now that might pop the knee up, so if you feel that you wanna use your other hand just to gently just assist it, to try and keep it straight as you go forwards, you can. But again, really visualize, get that mind-body connection. Really think about pulling the foot and the toes back towards you as you lean forwards, so you can work the muscles on the front, which might be slightly weaker, to stretch the muscles on the back that are getting a little bit tight. Good, and then relax. Okay, bring that foot back in. And then I want you to walk your hips back towards the back of your chair. So you can then relax. Good, well done everybody. So that finishes the um, exercise session for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed that video. Um, if you have, give it a thumbs up and it does definitely helps to support this channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Well done. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.